On the 28th of February, at about 9.54 p.m., a very bright six-second fireball was seen over the south of England. It's the most widely reported fireball ever seen, ever. And then the next day, I woke up to a million emails from all around the world, uh, from every network that images fireballs uh, over the UK skies, which is known as the UK Fireball Alliance, and we all come together to share data. Uh, basically thinking there was quite a good chance that something survived that fiery transition and ended up as a meteorite on the ground. Even before we knew there was a stone that Monday, seeing all that footage was just amazing. Like the fact people's doorbell cameras caught it was just so fun and the public all just got so excited so quick. By Monday morning, we knew that there was a good chance of meteorites on the ground um, in the south of England, we had a rough triangulation that sort of put it just north of Cheltenham, centred actually around the town of Winchcombe. We knew there'd been a bit found on a driveway, but when, if anyone looks at those videos, you can see these things, massive bright streaks through the sky. And it's quite obvious even to someone who doesn't know this stuff that it broke up. Like you can see lots of different flashes, different directions from different places. So it was that idea that clearly this thing fragmented this is the first time this has happened for 30 years so it's a literally once in my lifetime opportunity so we we had to go check out if something was there we've been for days in a big long line at least two meters apart conveniently because you need to be socially distanced to to make the most of this um, of the field um and get covering good ground and we've just been walking up and down so many fields never really seeing anything that turned out to be a meteorite. One of the most awesome parts about this story is that the person who spotted it uh, in the field was actually my partner, Mira, uh, who was volunteering with the University of Glasgow search team, which just kind of goes to show that you don't have to be a planetary scientist to be able to go out and hunt meteorites and contribute to this historic event. This sheep field, it was full of uh, sheep uh, poos, which was so shiny and beautiful and looking like a rock. So for me, who is not a scientist and a specialist and obviously have never seen a retreat only in a museum before, very hard. And the, the very moment when, uh, when I spotted it, we were beautifully in the, in the line, uh, searching through the field. And I, I will never, never forget this moment in my whole life. I was just walking and, and thinking, this is a very shiny rock. So I was like, look, look, can you come? Can you come and have a look to this? And then he, he arrived next to me, looked at me and said, this is, this is me trying. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. totally is. That is totally very is. obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got no clever words right now. Uh, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Oh, this is crazy. This is unbelievable. It felt like everything went slow motion as I was walking towards this, kind of got the glint of the fusion crust, saw like the sort of flow lines of everything going around it and going like, like, yeah, this is, this is it. We, we've done it. This is the real deal. I took videos, obviously, from, from every second and, and pictures. And the first thing when I arrived back in Glasgow was to print it out. So I, I have it huge in, in my in my desk. It was like a half hour. I was just literally shaking and thinking, I can't believe I found it. We found it. I spotted it. And and such a big team effort. And we did not give up in this beautiful Saturday morning and we found it. This was one of the best things in my life. We were all really excited, but it was just like such a wholesome, lovely thing to see that excitement, to see the fact. I think it really shows that, you know, a member of the public could spot this thing. One of the big questions in planetary science right now is how do you build a habitable planet? How did Earth get its oceans? Um, we think where Earth formed in our solar system, it should have formed much drier than it. We shouldn't have these beautiful blue oceans, this beautiful, nice, habitable world. And the kind of front runner for delivering those oceans, delivering that primordial organic soup to allow life to have a chance of getting going is throwing large carbonaceous chondrite asteroids at it early in our solar system's history that look very much like the Winchcombe meteorite. Um, we're really blessed in Glasgow that we've got a really good group that are really sort of experts in the petrology of these meteorites, particularly 
um, looking at tiny, tiny minerals that are literally on the order of like the width of a human hair or smaller. Um, and so we're going to be delving into those, digging out little bits, tearing it apart one atom at a time, uh, looking at their kind of crystallography, looking at the defects, how how this basically figuring out how this asteroid came to be. And if we're lucky, this rock will be the host of grains that existed before our solar system was born. And that actually, you know, doing extremely detailed isotopic studies of these things give us information on why our solar system formed, from what it formed from, and what existed before 4.6 billion years ago. And it's utterly unfathomably difficult to get your head around, but it's intriguing. Just one few kilograms of rock are gonna be able to give us such a, a huge history of, you know, of the universe. There's gonna be all sorts of folks doing stuff all around the country. Glasgow is really well placed to do a whole bunch of that work. Um, with uh, with CERC, with uh, the university's expertise, we have a lot of this sort of like rapid response type measurements. We can do those in house. So Anya is taking on the organic characterization of those organic molecules, which is going to be fantastic to see. My research is all about detection of organic molecules in meteorites, and I'm trying to understand how Mars got its organic molecules, its carbon-based molecules, because life as we know it is based around organic molecules. And one of the prevailing theories for how Mars got its carbon is from meteorites exactly like Winchcombe. Um, I've been working with a couple of little chips, one from uh, the piece that Mira found um, and one from the driveway. These type of meteorites are really exciting because they have things like amino acids, which every life form on Earth is kind of based on. So maybe that's where Earth got its building blocks, its amino acids from meteorites like this. So it really can't be understated just how exciting this is and just how many questions it could answer because it is so pristine. We're hoping that we got this thing so fast, so quickly, uh, that there are minerals in there we don't normally see. So if you have if rain falls on a meteorite, all the soluble minerals like salt, they're all gone. So we don't normally see them. So we're really hoping we can get that. Well, it's imperative that we get to these minerals and these, these, the hosts of these uh, water bearing compounds as soon as possible and try and tease out the composition of that water, in particular the isotopic composition of that water, to see what contribution it could have made to the Earth. Another really quick analysis that we need to do is these isotopes we call cosmogenic isotopes. They're produced by extremely high energy cosmic rays, highly charged, highly energetic charged particles um, that are flying around the, the, our solar system. There, some of those are generated in the sun. And so what if we can take a look at the concentration of these elements that have a rather short half-life, so they decay very quickly in a matter of hours or days or weeks, we can understand the duration that this meteorite has spent close to us. The reason we have this meteorite, and crucially, we can know exactly where it came from in the solar system, is thanks to the fact that we have these wonderful camera network across the UK. We're hopeful now that over the next few years, we're going to start seeing more and more of these events, see more fireballs that drop meteorites. And now that we have that confidence build that we can do this, we can collect meteorites and search for them, uh, hopefully this will become an annual event.